ooh, 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 ooh. Check this out. You're watching the Dean Show, and this is the mail bag where we answer the questions that come in the mail. I'm Yusuf Estes, and we got some good stuff here today. I want to look at this. Uh, yeah. This one asks, why is it the Muslims claim that they only worship God, the God, the same God of Abraham and the same God of Jesus, uh, peace be upon them. And yet, at the same time, they're actually worshiping a moon God in a black box in the desert. Okay, I know a lot of Muslims watching this right now are going, ah, this moon God thing again. What is it with these people? Well, first of all, remember, you have to say this. Thank you for asking me about my religion. Because they have gone to the trouble to come to us. You're always complaining that the media says this, the media says that. How come we don't get a chance? Well, you got a chance. Somebody's asking you a legitimate question. Why is it? Okay? Because they have perhaps seen pictures of the Kaaba, especially during the Hajj time. And even in Ramadan time, they'll put it on the regular news and show people going around. There's a black box out there, and it is in a desert. And then you know it, and I know that. So what's going on with that? And as far as the moon god is concerned, you and I both know that on top of many of the masajid, the mosques of the world, you see this crescent moon and a star in there. So it's a legitimate question. Maybe they're asking it in a harsh way, but take some time and give them the right answer. Remind them and remind yourself that Muslims can't lie, especially about our religion. And we have the proof. The proof is the evidence authenticated many, many hundreds of years ago. We know since 1400 years the Quran has never changed. And the Hadiths have been verified and authenticated by Imams Muslim and Bukhari and Termidhi and Ibn Majid and Abu Dawud and so and so and so. We know which ones of the Hadiths are absolutely authentic, which ones have a question mark and so on. So there's no doubt in our mind what was really said. That's the point. So let's remember. We have the truth and we have the proof. Let's look now and what's the evidence for what we're talking about. First of all, let's treat the subject of the moon god and get that out of the way. There was someone recently, and I'm not even going to mention his name, okay? But he wrote a book, The Moon God Called Allah. It is so full of fabrication and things taken out of context, misquoting even from archaeological finds and putting time dates at the wrong time, trying to say that Muslims worship the moon. This is such a ridiculous thing, and the person himself is ridiculous. I have tried to speak with them, and they will not return our emails or their phone calls anymore because all we ask them to do is be on the show with us, and let's talk about it. You'll have a chance to say whatever you want. We won't even edit it. You can say what you like. It wouldn't show up, okay? So let's talk about this. Muslims are forbidden in the Quran, clearly states in the Quran that you cannot worship the sun or the moon. You have to worship the one who created it. So how in the world could somebody take a statement like that and say, well, they're sun worshipers or moon worshipers? Because people did used to do that. Absolutely they did it. But the Quran forbid it. So how in the world can you twist that around? And as far as what is that crescent and star on the top of these mosques, that was a symbol of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans, when they took over and were running the show for Islam for a period of time, they used that crescent, and the crescent and the star represent what? Because when we look to the sky at the end of the months, the lunar months, we're looking to see where is the moon. And because as soon as we see the moon, a new month starts, and we know when it's time to start Ramadan, end Ramadan, our fasting month, and when it's time for us to get ready for the Hajj which is also uh, in the month of dhul -Hijjah. These are lunar months. So this is what it represents, nothing more than that. And the star, this was just some emblem that they put up there with it. Maybe because they see stars at, at night when you're looking for the moon. Who knows? But the point is, this was an emblem only for that dynasty, that family. It has nothing to do with our beliefs, and it was just an emblem to show which of the mosques were under that authority. Not a mosque, no more than that. What about the box? Let's talk about the black box in the desert. A gentleman came up to me one time after one of my lectures and he said, why is it you Muslims worship a black box in the desert? And I had just been talking about how to answer these questions. I asked the Muslims, sit down and listen to how I answer the question. 
So they did. And I said to him, first of all, do you understand I have to tell you the truth and we have the evidence to back up what we say. It's not going to be different from me and maybe some other scholar over here say something totally different. No, it's all the same. We know the same story. The foundation of the place that we're talking about, that foundation was laid there by Abraham himself. And it's the place, according to some of the narrations we have, that Adam put his head on the ground when he asked the Lord to forgive him for eating the fruit. That's how old the place is. It's ancient and it's a place of worship since time immemorial. Abraham used this same place. The descendants of Abraham through Ishmael lived at this very place. This is the place where Abraham left his wife Hagar or Hajar as we call her in Arabic, and her son Ismail, or Ishmael as we call him in English. And you can go there today, if you're Muslim, and you can see this is the place. It's never changed. Even though people used to worship idols and statues and so on there, when Islam came, it reminded them, go back to the real, authentic worship of Abraham. And that's what they were being called to do. The circumambulation and going around it seven times, and the act of wearing the two towels, these are all commemorating the things that Abraham and others did since that time. And it also clarifies in the Quran what is correct and what is not correct when it comes to this celebration and this type of festivity of doing the Hajj. It talks about going between the two mountains of Safa and Marwa, and this was something done by Hajr or Hagar at the time of being left there in the desert by Abraham. All of this commemorates worship of the one true God. And the house or black box there does not mean God's in that place. Any more than it does in the scripture, if you want to look back to the Old Testament, when it was the prophet David or Suleiman, Suleiman, who was saying, when he raised his hands and looked at the congregation and blessed the people, and he was saying to them, that he was consecrating the house of worship. And he, what was he saying? He was saying that this house, he said the heavens and the heavens of the earth and all the heavens cannot contain you, how much less this house built with human hands. Words to that effect. Depends on which translation of the Bible you have, but you can see it for yourself. And this is the same attitude as a Muslim. There's nothing that contains Allah in the universe. The universe itself could not contain Allah. It's much, much uh, remote from the thinking of a Muslim to say that Allah is in the creation, permeating the creation, or is a part of the creation. This is away from our thinking. It's not in our belief system or our aqidah. So understand that we're worshiping here as a focal point, worshiping the God on the place where Adam, Abraham, and all of the prophets had come to at one time or another to this place to worship, including even Jesus, including even Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon them all. Well, at the conclusion of that little talk, the gentleman who asked me the question stood up and he said, I bear witness there's none to worship except the God of Abraham and Jesus and Muhammad. And I bear witness of Muhammad being the messenger of Allah. And with that, he accepted Islam and became one. It was in Canada. And he became one of the strong brothers of Dawah or calling to Islam in his area. The next time I visited, he had a long beard, was wearing a white thobe. And he said, do you remember me? I said, no. He said, I'm the guy to ask you about the black box in the desert. <laughs> until, until next time, this is Yusuf Estes wishing you peace. You've been watching The Mailbox here on The Dean Show.